In the previous video, we saw the statement of the Lovas local lemma. In this video, we're going to prove it. Recall the Lovas local lemma, or LLL. It says that if we have a collection of bad events, A1 through AM, so that for all i, the probability of AI is at most p, and the event AI is mutually independent from all but d other events, then intuitively, if the bad events aren't too dependent, meaning that d is small enough compared to 1 over p, then there's a positive probability that none of the events occur. Formally, we saw two different versions of the Lovas local lemma. In this video, we're just going to prove this first version. In order to prove that first version of the Lovas local lemma, we'll first prove a helper lemma. It says the following. Assume the same setup as in the Lovas local lemma. So that's up here. We have m bad events, each of which occur with probability at most p, and which are mutually independent of all but d other events. Then, this new lemma says, for any set S, a subset of 1 through M, and for any I not in S, the probability that AI occurs, conditioned on none of the events in S occurring, is at most 2 times P. If we could prove that, this will imply the Lovas local lemma. Indeed, the probability that none of the AI occur is equal to the probability that a1 does not occur, conditional on a j not occurring for all j from 2 to m, times the probability that a2 does not occur, conditional on none of the aj occurring from j equals 3 to m, and so on, all the way up to the probability that am does not occur. The lemma implies that each one of these terms is at least 1 minus 2p. Thus, this whole thing is at least 1 minus 2p to the m, which was the statement of the Lovas local lemma. Thus, if we could prove this lemma, it would imply the Lovas local lemma. So for the rest of this video, let's focus our attention on proving this lemma. We're going to prove this lemma by induction on the size of s. So as a base case, if the size of s is equal to 0, then the probability that ai occurs conditioned on all of the events in s not occurring, well, s is empty, so that's just conditioned on nothing. This is just equal to the probability that ai occurs, which by the assumption of the Lovas local lemma is less than or equal to p, which in particular is less than or equal to 2 times p. Great, so the base case is proved. Let's move on to the inductive step. Suppose that the statement holds for all s of size at most k, and now we're going to choose some new set s of size k plus 1. I'm going to define a few new sets. So suppose that this is the set of all indices 1 through m, and let's say that here's our set capital S. Now, from the assumptions of the Lovas local lemma, I know that all of the events, 1 through m, can be split into two parts, where on this side, I have events that are mutually independent from ai, and on the other side, I have events that might be dependent with ai, but there's not too many of them, at most d things other than i. Let's define this set here of s intersected with the dependent things to be equal to s sub dep. And then let's define this set over here, that is the intersection of s with the mutually independent things. Let's call this s sub ind for independent. Now we'll break the analysis up into two cases. In case one, suppose that s sub ind is equal to k plus 1. That means that s is equal to s ind, since s itself has size k plus 1. Well, in that case, we're done, because the probability of ai conditioned on none of the aj in s happening 
is just equal to the probability of AI using the fact that everything in S also lives in S ind and therefore doesn't affect the probability of AI. But by the assumptions of the LLL, this is at most P, which is itself at most 2P. So in case one, we're done. In case two, the size of S ind is less than or equal to K. That is, S is not equal to S ind. In this case, we can write the following relationship using Bayes' rule. The probability that AI occurs conditioned on AJ not occurring for any J in S is equal to the following quotient. So I'm just going to write it out, and then we'll look at it. OK, so here it is. So in the numerator, we have the following. We have the probability of a sub i and the event that none of the aj occur for all of the j in this dependent set conditioned on the event that none of the al occur for all of the l in this independent set. In the numerator, we have the probability of the event that none of the aj occur for j in the dependent set conditioned on the event that none of the al occur for l in this independent set. OK, so this might look a bit gross, but it's really just the definition of conditional expectation, or Bayes' rule. To see this, I'm going to highlight AI blue, and then I'll highlight this event, the event that none of the AJ in S sub dep occur. Highlight that orange. And then I'll highlight this event, the event that none of the AL in S sub in occur, I'll highlight that pink. And this event here, the event that none of the aj occur for all j and s, this is just the and of the orange event and the pink event. So if you ignore all of the symbols, this just says that the probability of blue conditioned on orange and pink is equal to the probability of blue and orange conditioned on pink divided by the probability of orange conditioned on pink. And that's true for any events, blue, orange, and pink. OK, so now we have this expression, and we want to bound it. So I'm going to bound the numerator and the denominator separately. Let's start with the denominator. The probability that none of the aj occur for j in s dep conditioned on the probability that none of the AL occur for L and S ind. By the union bound, this is at least 1 minus the sum over all J in S dep of the probability that AJ occurs conditioned on none of the AL occurring for L and S ind. Now remember that we're in the case where S ind has size at most k. So now we can use our inductive hypothesis to conclude that each one of these terms is at most 2p. Moreover, by the assumption of the Lovas local lemma, there are at most d things in this sum, because S dep has size at most d. In particular, there are at most 1 divided by 4p things in this sum, because of our assumption that p times d is less than or equal to 1 fourth. Therefore, this whole expression is at least 1 minus 1 divided by 4p times 2p, which is just equal to 1 half. Cool. Now let's look at the numerator. The probability that ai and the event that none of the aj hold for j and s dep conditioned on the event that none of the al hold for l and s ind, well, this is at most the probability of ai conditioned on all that same stuff. That's because if I just drop this term, the probability is not going to get any smaller. 
And now, using the fact that all of the events in S ind are independent of A i, this is just equal to the probability that A i occurs, which by assumption is less than or equal to p. Therefore, coming back up to this expression, we've now bounded this as less than or equal to p divided by 1 half, which is equal to 2p. And that establishes the inductive hypothesis for the next round. Check. So this proves the helper lemma that we wanted to prove, and thus the whole Lovos local lemma. To recap, we just proved this version 1 of the Lovos local lemma. The proof of version 2 is similar. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.